Initiate Titanfall. <laughs> Boom. Oh. I'm here now. Get inside of me. Get inside of me to live. <laughs> Please climb it, inside. It's pilot me. <laughs> pilot me, Adam. <laughs> pilot your boy. I'm your boy, BT. Pilot, pilot me. <laughs> pilot your boy, MS. Um, <laughs> hey, it's one upsmanship. Yeah, it is. We're back. We are I back. I wonder what game this one will be about. Who could um, say? Uh, who who could who tighten could say? it? <laughs> who can fathom the fall? Let the titans fall where they may. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you said we're back. Yeah. Do you always say we're back? No, just we're back from the last time we were here. Okay. Uh, still you don't doing require, it. There was no special absence or anything. No. Uh, I mean, other than the yeah. absence they no doubt felt in their hearts since last they I, encountered yeah, that's us. that's true. You know? I would say we've always been here. I think of us as even when they're not listening to us, we just sit in the corner of their <laughs> room or car. Watching them game. Mm-hmm. Mm, look at them. That's a good turn. Mm. Look at them. Pick they're up, good. Pick they're up good that little item. little listeners. Pick it up. Uh, but yes, we are discussing Titanfall 2. Yes, we are. Uh, and first thing I want to bring out before we even get into our normal segments, mm-hmm. this game, well... I mean, Respawn is doing quite well, primarily because of Apex Legends. Right, right. This game, uh, it's like, it's weird. It was middle of the road. It didn't tank. It didn't bomb. I, I want to ask why we're covering Titanfall 2. I actually think if you read down the list of games we cover, it kind of raises the question. Why this Titanfall one? 2? Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah. I, or do you think it goes without saying why we would cover it? I don't think people think of it as a seminal shooter. No, uh, it should be. I, I like uh, maybe maybe that's why we're covering this because I feel like it yeah, exactly. should be. I think that's what we're getting at. Yeah. 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 It doesn't deserve it in terms of being as big a touchstone as like Call of Duty or uh, Battlefield even. Uh, but I, mm-hmm. I would argue it should be that. Well, it uh, had, and that's, and yeah. And as far as just sales go, it had a lot of, I remember it had strong buzz upon release and people yeah. really enjoyed it and it was well reviewed, but then the community fell off pretty quickly. It's a property. I feel like everybody's rooting for, like, this is a game that I feel like everybody who's played it is like, man, I really think, wish they'd keep doing that. I wish they'd they'd make the one that really breaks through and takes over a big lion's share of the market. Um, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if I, they're gonna do that. I'm not sure. All right, great. Yeah. So let's. How do you save in Titanfall? I mean, I just die. Usually, <laughs> I save by getting killed. It's usually just by auto saves. You've, you've murdered enough. You've turned enough people into a fine red mist, and uh, you just move into the next segment, right? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Let's hop onto a conveyor belt of prefab housing units. Oh, yeah. And auto save our way into our first segment, which mm. is the speed run. Do you remember who did last? Who I, did most recent I speed run? I believe it's your turn. I, I believe it's your turn. Mm. I know. Mm. This is a tough All one right. to do it on. I know. It's a little tough, but I'll. I'll start when you do when you do what you do. Of so course, well. uh, of course, uh, and and time. No. Oh, okay. I didn't know if time was saying. Oh, I'm wasting time already. <laughs> um, private, private last class. Jack Cooper uh, graduates from generic hero name school and enlists in <laughs> space and enlists in space force. Go space force. Trump number one. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, and he uh, in the future, there's fighting. There's your guys who are good. You're called the militia. And there's the IMC. I forget what it stands for, but they're also humans and they have their reasons for doing the things they do. And hey, maybe if you were lit, raised in their circumstances, you'd feel the other way. But regardless, you all try to kill each other in space and um we root for us because that's what you do and uh private jack cooper is training to be a pilot pilots pilot mechs which are not voltron size mechs or godzilla size mechs but uh i would say like hmm five times the size of a human size mechs maybe yeah three-story building uh, three-story building size maybe yeah 
Yeah. And we accept the thing that we always accept in stories like this that makes no sense, which is that instead of satellite lasers and uh, chemical weapons and radiation technology, the pinnacle way to fight is in a giant robot shaped like a human with guns on it. Yep. So these are feared. Everyone fears these things. And <laughs> the people who pilot them are also feared because uh, you have to train. It's like the Navy SEALs if SEALs floated in space. And you are one. But you get a boy, you get a heck of a promotion when you, the guy who was like your mentor, is killed in battle suddenly before your eyes. His mech BT imprints upon you. Uh, so you're the one who's now freed to neurally link with him. And he's basically like, you have to continue the mission that the dead guy had. The mission turns out to be a mission that will turn the tide of the war. And obviously, you do it. Right. You do the mission. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Stop that's right. Time. You did good. Now. You did good. Thank you. I thought that was a great speed run. Vague uh, but good. No, no, but it wasn't vague at all. I, you were you gave exactly okay. the story. I, I just my only supplemental piece of information I, I say is it it's a first person shooter that Ooh, that is somewhere be- mistake. Tw- somewhere between Call of Duty and Destiny. Right? It's sort of like an in between property. Yes. And I glossed over the most important mechanic. I mean, you probably intuited it from the nature of the story, but it's, I think it's important to highlight that the key mechanic is that sometimes you can't be in BT and you fight in a semi, mostly traditional FPS like Call of Duty. And then when BT or any Titan in multiplayer is summoned and you climb into it, it you still have FPS controls, but... The perspective is different, right. and your rhythm is different, and now you're a giant mech. But you're still looking out the front face of the mech like it's a first person dealy. Yeah, I mean, in fact, and yeah. and they go to they go to great pains to uh, explain and exposit exactly how the rules work in this game, mm-hmm. which is really interesting because the last one, the first Titanfall, if you remember, I mean, I don't want to waste all my rant on this, but uh, so is maybe this a rant? I'm getting there. Yeah, I was about to get into it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's. So I've murdered the prerequisite number of bots yeah. and maybe a couple human I don't players. To start talking about stuff that's better suited for game on. Yeah. So uh, hey, let's get off on a rant here. Yeah. Player two, Adam Ganser, that's ranting me. at you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so look, I really like this game. Uh, I think it's very good. I think it's very charming. Um, it. I think it's trying to be what I might call a best of both worlds of a sci-fi shooter and a military-esque Call of Duty. Um, And I do think it's more fun than most Calls of Duty. Um, I think it's a little less fun to me personally than Destiny in a a multiplayer conglomerate sense. Um, I don't know if it's less fun in the everyday, just moment-to-moment sense, because it's really well designed and the controls are very responsive and fun um piloting a titan is fun piloting a pilot is fun um they have they both have their certain sets of limitations and encourage two different styles of play um and you know because of all the varieties of different kinds of titans and stuff they encourage quite a few different varieties of play as a titan um but I think no matter how complicated and fun this loop is, they haven't yet figured out how to make it like seminal, how to make it a the memorable version that occupies a permanent space in the consumer's mind every couple years, which they need to do for it to continue happening. Um, I thought the plot... So most people praise the campaign in this game. They were like, this game has an incredible campaign and like it's... Uh, super fun. I thought the campaign was whatever. Um, it's fun to play through, but I thought the story narratively is very whatever. Um, it's very hard to care or get connected to any of the factions. And the fact that your Titan is sentient uh, creates a whole lot of problems for me narratively that I did not have in the first Titanfall. Um, and I definitely have them now. Specifically that like when you're playing the multiplayer, you're just burning through Titans left and right to get to a kill count. And it's like, so like all these beings have to die. (laughs) Like you're just summoning a being that has to die every time you're playing multiplayer. I don't know about that, man. Um, Anyway, so all I want to say is as a property, I think this is really fun. I think there is room for it to be 
have its own sort of space in our first person shooter drenched economy. Um, I don't know that it's going to break through when things like Fortnite uh, and Apex Legends also occupy some of that space now. Um, so it may not end up working out because it's several years old now, and that concerns me. Um, and also, I think it might have the problem that VR has, which is that it's sort of like, because it's an in-between experience, but not a fully new experience, it isn't a thing that people are going to rally behind. It's only going to have a niche audience. And that would be my argument against most VR stuff at this point, which is it's not quite a fully immersive experience, and therefore it's not, you know, kicking ass like it should. Um, and I think that's my rant for now. Wow. Wow. Well, just yeah, wow. did you like that? I know. <laughs> I, I can't wait to hear it. what you and say. I'll tell you why. Oh, oh, wow. Player one no. coming in <laughs> real hot. Uh, that's the privilege of doing the speed run. It, the speed yeah. run, it can be high pressure, but then because it alternates, you get to do the second rant. So your rant inevitably yeah. becomes just a takedown of the first rant. Yes, it and does. I, that's I'm one in, of the geniuses of our <laughs> podcast format. I'm in the catbird seat, as they say. And I'm going to yeah. piss all over everything you said. First of all, I want to point out, so we'll go chronologically. Um, yeah. The game sucks. Now, that, that's actually not where we part ways. I like the game. Whoa. But um, the, uh, I want to point out to longtime listeners that you said you pilot the mech and you pilot the pilot. Um, f- this, besides the sloppy diction and redundancy. Uh, the, okay. Um, the, All uh, right. I'm coming in hot, dude. <laughs> this Titan's going to fall. Uh, Settle down. All right. I'll take it down a notch. But you... it. Harken back to in our Hollow Knight episode recently when you said you pilot the bug. And I just think it's very telling if you're looking for the Siskel and Ebert of it all, like which of us, where we are on the spectrum. I, we occasionally point out like this is an insight and this is an insight. I always say play as, play as right, whatever right. the character is. And you usually say pilot the, like you pilot Simon Belfort in Castlevania, Belmont, whatever. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just think that's very telling because I only or I mostly like games where they give you invitations to pretend you're really doing it and you don't give a shit about that. <laughs> I, you know what? Like, yeah, I think you're right. You're like, this you're is right like an that. RC car. I'm piloting it. It's a game. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's you fair. Fool. Yeah. That wasn't the takedown part. That was just interesting. No, no. Um, that's funny. Uh and really nothing is a takedown. I was trying to fabricate some drama for the sake of the entertaining it. entertainment I value. It. Um but I but I'm basically bouncing off of things you said rather than having my own points. Uh they respawn also created uh, you know, Apex. And I do think we will not get another Titanfall. I could be wrong. Stuff comes back. I don't like they brought, you know, they bring back shit where you're like, there's no money in that. Why is that coming back? Um, But I would be happy to see another Titanfall. I just think it's unlikely because to me, I see Titanfall and this is why I wanted to cover it too, especially because one, two feels like it built on one and did that thing game so often do where it crystallizes the ideas, uh, especially by adding the single player campaign, which becomes more of a focus showcase for your ideas. Like, look, multiplayer, we were trying to make a lot of money with our multiplayer and get in as many people's veins as possible. But here's a showcase of our ideas in chronological order. Here's what we were getting at is sort of what the single player campaign gives you. And I think those ideas were interesting enough that I'm of the opinion that we wouldn't have destiny or destiny wouldn't be the way it was without them. Not that I don't know what the employee crossover is, but I more mean in the artistic dialectical sense, I think destiny learned from Titanfall or they were both going in the same artistic direction at the same time. Um, but furthermore, the huge focus on traversal mechanics as being the way to freshen up what the FPS experience is, I think really got reached its height or gained like momentum or somehow reached an apotheosis with the Titanfall team realizing that. And I think Titanfall, and this is what we'll talk about a lot more in game on. So I'll just leave that there. Uh, I might be done with my rant because that's like the table of contents of what I want to unpack. Okay. But I will just say that about BT, (laughs) I think something that makes it work like Jedi Fallen Order is the robot sidekick is very likable. 
Um, everyone likes yeah. BT. Yeah. BT he is. is more likable than the human characters who are almost more robotic or robotic in a sense. But uh, my question is it, I never thought about it in multiplayer that do you think those Titans are sentient in the way that BT was? I think they're all sentient, right? Isn't that what's implied? BT is not a magic. Because uh, that's how you form Titan. a neural link, right? I, I so assume then, that's what they were saying. Hmm. Okay, it's a we'll huge, have to get it's a into huge that. mistake. Like it's a huge mistake, lore wise. I understand why they did it. It's just a huge mistake, lore wise. Okay, without breaking the flow, checkpoint, checkpoint. Dispense yeah. with the cute analogies. Game on. Um, yeah, yeah. So let's just let's go from there, and we'll and we'll meander. But sure. Uh, in multiplayer, the Titans say uh, "grab bag of catchphrases" while you fight, right? And that's the extent. I of don't it. even. I, I you know I or are played. They silent? I, did, I I think they're mostly silent in multiplayer, uh, which is why choosing to have your sort of ET version of BT is um, a weird choice because it sure. sort of retro it retrofits consciousness <laughs> to all those Titans. Although I guess what I was going to argue is that don't do you not retrofit consciousness to all the millions of human soldiers you gun down in any first person shooter? They're humans. Yeah. What a complex machine! Lo, behold, it breathes, it feels, it loves. <laughs> bang bang. Well, <laughs> <laughs> sure. I I mean, like, I'm not. I'm not. This is not the first time that I've realized. You know, we're killing beings. They're real yeah. beings. Like this. This is not the first time I've realized that. I just think that when. So the premise of Titanfall, generally speaking, is you're trying to fight a war for resources. Most of the resources yeah. go into building titans. Right, that we did that was, whole that escort was what we talked mission. About on escort mission, and that yeah. was your point, which is a good observation: is stop building thousands of mechs, and you'll have more resources. <laughs> right, it's like this is an easy problem for me to solve. I just step yeah. in and turn off the Titan faucet. Uh, I right, exactly. But like, if they're also making them conscious, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> then it's like so we're like creating beings for the purpose of creating those beings and then murdering them to right. acquire more of these beings. It's really crazy. Playtime uh, is fun time. It's really crazy. I mean, I guess all war is that. It just makes it war is madness, so my baffling. Friend. Yeah. Sure, sure. But like I feel like I left the campaign not understanding at all. What yeah. anyone was fighting for other than the arc super weapon, right? It's like the well, only thing anybody's fighting for. And I I tried to cheekily highlight that in my plot synopsis. But yes, that's what it boils down to. And I think you made a great point that it still strives to be military, even though it's sci-fi, it feels very military. Uh, yeah. You are supposed... The one thing you have to accept a priori is... You are fighting to make the enemy lose because they're evil, I guess. You don't... You can't... Like, if we delved into the political realities of what are the resource demands of the IMC, it all falls apart. You just have to accept that we are the allies and they are the axis and assume that you're right and it's a game, you know. But everything else tracks fine as long as you accept that I guess they're just bad guys, yeah. This narrative is somehow shallower than Destiny's. Like Destiny yeah. also has a very shallow narrative of yes, the darkness came and took took our magic mm-hmm. away and you got to fight it. It's like okay, great, uh, yeah. but like it bothers to be consistent. <laughs> like it bothers that to be that way. And well, this, this just game's has, like fuck that. And yet, the largest franchise of all time just put its final like grace note out with the same logic, which is. I don't know. You go here. Why do you go there? Because that's the item that tells you to go there. Well, what's there? The item that tells you where the final guy is. What do you do when you get there? Kill him. That's the that's Rise of Skywalker, and it's fucking Titanfall sure. 2. You just get sure. the key to the map, and the map leads to the place, and you kill the guy at the place. Right. And you but win the war. But that's also... <laughs> that's a cr- but that's like legit a criticism of Rise of Skywalker is that it's that that's what it oh, is. Oh, Rise of Skywalker sucked ass, but this is yeah, the right, place right. for that. <laughs> right. But but like uh, so well first of all, I think Titanfall actually is a slightly better narrative than Rise of Skywalker since you brought it up. Um just because friends, well, they have the luxury of you're with BT constantly and the banter is it. genuinely yes. good. 
So That's you it. get one realistically drawn like bonding experience. That feels great. It's fun. It feels good. Well, <laughs> and like every action movie, you're sort of, uh, you know, it's ultimately you versus a bunch of monsters in this little house. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that's that's just like the diehard thing, right? Where yeah. it's like these two are basically stuck on this planet and they have to figure out what's going on and they don't really have anybody helping them until later when they join other forces and then the whole plot gets very convoluted. It's like, what mm-hmm. the fuck is this now? Um, I don't want to shit on the plot. It's just the only reason I keep bringing it up, though, is that like it was literally the only thing that people were talking about as far as like, look how great this game is. Uh, the campaign plot is very good. And it's and like what they mean is BT's the friendship with BT felt yeah, good. That's the sure, only real it element. Did, it, yeah. it did. But like, it I'm did. also like turn your, turn your like high school, sophomore level analysis on friends. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're, so let's not what talk are we about doing that. Here? Cause I yeah. find myself impatient. I'm like, that's enough talking about the plot. That's not why we're yeah. covering it. Funny. Cause we're yeah, actually I mean, interested well, in to unpack the uh, thing I said, in my rant about the money. Uh, I think it's interesting that they pursue both gameplay mechanic ideas, but I also feel respawn is clearly a business enterprise. And now that they have a place to showcase this dynamic, like these gameplay ideas through Apex Legends that is making money hand over fist, I don't know why they would go back to Titanfall unless they introduce a Titanfall-like mechanic into Apex Legends or something. But I think that despite the fact that Respawn Entertainment is clearly out to make money and are making one of the more profitable like design, like devs in the game industry right now, uh, they are presenting cool ideas that are legitimate and Titanfall has a few I want to touch on. And I'm going to start with the one that I that we haven't talked about at length between ourselves off mic before, which is the vibrancy of the color palette and the saturation of everything, uh, is what made me think Destiny learned somewhat from it because it broke away from the gritty or even the Transformers orange and blue color palette that pervaded FPS. I'm thinking like Metro, I'm thinking Kill Zone, I'm thinking Red right, Faction. Right. And I didn't the sci fi, f- like, why isn't it just near future military? Uh, because I would argue they actually had an interest in showcasing. Harmony, you know, the planet where the rocks float and everything's really trippy and cool looking. And I think Destiny locations have that same. I don't I'm not even arguing necessarily consciously inspired, but that impulse could be parallel. That's all. And I like that direction. Outer world outer worlds is like that. I like that shooters are becoming colorful sci fi again instead of drab sci fi. And you, yeah, I agree with that 100%. And and by by Destiny, learning from this, you mean Destiny 2, right? Yes, like, I do, yeah. De- okay, fair enough. So um, I actually found the color palette to be very limited in Titanfall for most of the game, but it did open up um, after you got to the ho- like the, the level that you mentioned with the floating house parts. Uh, mm-hmm. That's when the color palette started to open up. But before that, it was kind of orange and blue. Um, well, remember the Battle Dome. And remember the yeah, conveyor yeah. belt of green grass and like they found That's ways the one to I'm put talking about. Yeah, yeah. incongruous imagery yes. into your world. They yeah. did. And it made a big difference uh, because it took it out of the Call of Duty advanced warfare spot and put it in mm-hmm. more of a like there is a sort of wonder to the game. Um, and and like there's been other games since that I feel like are trying trying to be inspired by this look like Anthem. Um, yes. or some other games, and they aren't quite as successful because they're too cluttered. I think Godfall um, or Greedfall is the next one that looks like it's yeah. taking the same swing. Yeah, Titanfall is very finely balanced so that it has a little bit of flourish, but it doesn't feel like an anime per se. You know what I mean? Like it's not like mm-hmm. super uh, cartoonish in any way. Um, and it's militaristic, but it's not... Uh, realistic in its militarism and therefore we feel free to be more than a call of duty soldier. Um, but so yeah, your color palette thing is, is totally legit. Um, I want to talk about the movement cause I feel like that's the place where Titanfall really I knew when we got onto that tip, that would probably fill out the rest of the episode. So I was just intentionally delaying it, but now's a good oh, sure. time. Okay. Wanted to, because um, that's, that's what we're talking about is the, uh, 
as we said, uh, we were like in the email thread, do you want to talk Titanfall 2? And so I was like, hope you're ready to talk about the evolution of traversal in FPSs. Yeah. Because that's, that's what that's, it was. That's yeah. right. Because that's what makes this game worth talking about. Um, so it's not like it has any particularly new things, at least not to my knowledge. It's just that it's a combination of things that made first person shooting feel vertical in a way that it hadn't in a very long time or maybe ever some quake um, arena levels i remember being sure, vertical sure. as a novelty sure they'd be like look some weirdo made a vertical level yeah <laughs> right and and of course i mean you know certainly destiny had a little bit of you know fighting up or whatever but like titanfall felt very much like no, no, you're always fighting on multiple levels. Like you, you, you can be running around on the ground, but you got to look to the skies all the time, also. Um, mm-hmm. And that, and that's a big change for first-person shooters. Um, yes, a huge and change. As we talk about another thing, I have think it has in kinship with Destiny is we always talk about the dialed-in feeling of the actual interaction. There yeah. are lots of games that have done jump and hit the wall to run at an angle on the wall. Prince of Persia and Sands of Time comes to mind. And it's a usually a pretty good mechanic. And it usually feels like your feet hook onto a rail on the wall and it runs a predetermined amount of time and then you arc down and that's all fine. In Titanfall, you just it's just the best that has ever been. That idea of jumping and running on the wall. You subtly speed up if you run on the wall. So you actually like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 style find yourself getting good at, yeah, I'm going to fucking see that guy way in the distance. (laughs) I'm going to shoot this guy while I run in a circle around the chamber. And then I'm going to jump over there, shoot that guy and run up the wall and shoot the guy at the top. That yep. is cool. It's just it's very fun cool. to do. <laughs> yeah. it, it's it's very fun. I, I'll, and like in combination with that, it also is very heavy on sliding. Um, the yeah, slide sliding is, is actually useful for in it. Yeah, it's well, it's not like a way to game the system. It's like built in as like a really heavily used feature as part of the combat, and it makes you feel like a like a super soldier. But yeah, not there like were moments a, where I felt. Like I was playing Mirror's Edge, but I got to kill yes. as many people as Correct. I wanted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's really I, Mirror's Edge is actually a really great touchstone because it all it feels as fluid as that. Um, and Mirror's and, Edge made a whole game out of. Did you know Traversal could be this fluid? That's our whole right. game. Right, yeah. that's what we're doing. Congratulations, you're going to experience that. Right, I feel like it took everything that I liked about Mirror's Edge and then put a, a fun gun in its hands uh, <laughs> yeah. and made. You know what I mean? And then made like a bunch of really crunchy enemies to just like knock down. Um, And then, and see, I think this is where the genius of the game comes in is like, because it would feel sort of overpowered if they didn't have Titans. See, Titans in a way reduced you back to a quote unquote regular soldier, you know? So like in a way, like, so, you know, like I said, you feel like a super soldier, but then of course you're fighting against like gigantic mechs that can punch you to death with one punch, which with is hilarious hit, to do. So you get in your Titan. Yeah, exactly. And now and that's, you're forced to do a different l- gameplay loop for a while. Right. And it's and, really it's fun organic. to Yeah. It's really fun to mow down like five or six other people. Just not because they're bad at the game, just because like don't pop your head out here, bro. I'm in a Titan. Yeah. I'm gonna, no, fucking, but I'm gonna missile you. It's weird to these are odd comparisons, but they're compelling to me. It gave me the feeling that I got in Katamari Damacy that I found so delightful, which Mm. is when you finally change scale. And Katamari Damacy did a much more in-depth job because you change scale infinite times and blah, 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 and that's what it's all about. But it still gives you the same feeling where you're like, it's interesting that I used to be this size and those guys were a threat and these guys were an unstoppable threat. Now I'm bigger and the guys that were like me, I kill in one hit, but these guys are now my peers and there's nothing above me. And when I switch back now, they're a danger. You're constantly, your brain gets to switch what is tagged as dangerous to you, how dangerous to you, how important to dash away from that, how soft of a target is that, what target to prioritize. Right. Every right. time you shift levels, those tags shift. And every FPS player knows what I'm talking about, where you're like... Well, I want to kill the things in this room roughly in this order. Oh, BT smashed through the window. I jump inside. Okay, now I want to kill the things in the room in this order. <laughs> and it's right. a fun shift. Yeah. It's definitely like Titanfall encourages you to improv. 
Uh, yes. And it, and it's built with a really solid smart container and really strong levels so that you can kind of on the fly, like, all right, man, run on this wall. Oh, there's a guy. Okay, better jump and flip behind him and slide over to this guy. And then, like, maybe I'll have enough for a Titan then. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, it's it, it does make you play chess, but it makes you play chess only a couple of moves ahead because it changes the landscape so dramatically every time a new Titan comes. Um, yes. And I think they're... I think that FPSs were stagnant for a long time in our recent past. They Agreed. were basically all in the Call of Duty model, and I actually see that we're breaking out of that. Yes. Uh, and there, are, it's awesome to see the ways different creators have found the way to refresh the idea of what an FPS can be. One of that's gotten a lot of acclaim is Super Hot, uh, which works where. It's an FPS where time only moves when you're moving. So and every time you stand still, everything freezes. So you navigate the level by being an incredible, like John Wick style. Every turn you did was perfect because otherwise That's you would have been killed. I haven't played that. I got to um, check that out. There's another cool. one. There's a new multiplayer game that works on a, thre- a tripartite time loop. So you play one 30-second round of deathmatch. Then you loop back in time and you can interact again. So like if you can kill your enemy at a time at a point in time earlier than when they killed you the first time, now there's two of you alive. And then you do it again and you constantly fuck with each other's time loops through repeated death. Man. So my point is just it's a good time again for FPS yeah. as I think they're on yes. the upswing. And uh, I know we've both been playing Doom Eternal and Doom Eternal, which is feels great. A lot like Titanfall 2, where yeah, it does. what is you're not we're breaking out of the old paradigm of the logic is pop out of cover, shoot, duck into cover till you heal, reload while you're ducked. That's kind of a good strategy. Um, now there's all kinds of different games that pl- have different underlying FPS mechanics. And Doom reminds me a lot of Titanfall, where the way your brain is working is just constantly thinking right tool for the right job at this time. And you link together an improvisational series of, oh, I kill that demon with that because he's weak to it. Oh, that puts me in this position. I better dash here. Now I can punch this guy because it just recharged. And I think Titanfall 2 is a part of that lineage. And it's so think, early, it was kind of ahead of its time that it didn't get praised for the mechanical innovations, although they are getting as, praised for the same innovations now that they're in Apex Legends. But I just feel like it is seminal in the sense that it was there at the beginning of this new FPS renaissance. I mean, it it serves as a, as a what you might call a transitional form in that it's a pivot away from realism. You know, I feel like uh, Mm -hmm. after Halo, first-person shooters just sort of drove invariably toward realism for a very long time, um, mostly because of Call of Duty and Battlefield. And then Titanfall... And Titanfall represents like a... Okay, but maybe realism as a springboard to something that's fun. You know what I mean? like Gears uh, of War is not strictly realistic, but it is gritty, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I right. Of course, I don't mean realism like it's just simulating reality. I mean realism like the thing that's fun to do is to simulate how war generally works. Mm-hmm. Uh, you yeah, know, like cover-based shooting, as you'd say. And like that was innovative for a little while because, you know, before that it was Goldeneye, which was ridiculous and also fun in its different ways. And and also Halo, which was never realistic. And Titanfall represents a pivot to verticality and still like the sort of grindy, like really well tuned shooting mechanics, but uh, also you know verticality and lots of jumps and you know uh, an oversized opponent sometimes. And is there anything more fun in any first person shooter than like being the one who hops on a Titan and throws a grenade down its gullet? That's the most fun thing in the world, right? Like blowing up a Titan when you're a pilot, it's the best. It feels like quite an account, especially in multiplayer where, you know, a real human was trying to not let you do that. And it's so yeah. hard to do. Yeah. It's, it's like it's getting so a goal fun. in soccer or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what that's video games need to create those moments. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, that's why everybody got so pumped on Destiny's raids when they first came out is because you'd get those drops, right? Where it's like, oh, shit, I got the Gallahorn or whatever it is. And like, that's a huge moment in a game. And I think, oh, shit, blown up a Titan as a pilot is just like that. You know, yeah. uh, it's very, it's very fun. So I do have some critiques. Are you oh, ready for too. those? 
Okay, mm-hmm. great. Um, I don't think I, I the guns are so uh, bland and nameless and the same. Like the guns are there's basically like you know three types of guns. There's the shotgun type. There's the machine gun of various types, and then there's like a like a rifle sniper. slash sniper type. Yeah, and I don't uh, like any of the guns really. Honestly, no, they shoot well. Like they func- they handle well. They're just by not- like I mean, yeah, they all get the job done, or the game wouldn't be functional. But I mean, there's in FPSs, there's usually a gun that I'm like. Oh, that's my favorite gun. I love when I right. find one of those. I don't right. care about any of these guns at all. <laughs> yeah. I would argue that even Call of Duty's guns serve, uh, like, have a slightly more tuned and specific, like, specificity to them. Yeah, um, I have preferences between the various yeah. machine guns in Call of Duty, but I don't right. in Titanfall. Whatever's Where, I mean, around is fine. And again, the gold standard for that is Destiny still. Uh, Destiny has created, like, every gun has its own vibe. And uh, even though there's categories, they still all have their own unique thing. And Titanfall is really low on that totem. But wouldn't you... I would argue that they were taking a page out of Halo's book. Isn't that Halo's thing, is don't worry about the guns? They're interchangeable? Who cares? No, no, no. I think Halo has really distinct guns. Uh, because they're like they're all very different types. They're distinct. Um, yeah, I guess I resent Halo for introducing the. I don't like the. I like the weapon wheel. I like to hold right, as many right, guns as I've right. encountered thus far. You I don't like understand Doom. the benefit of the two. Not just Doom. Ninety-five percent of FPSs have the weapon wheel. Maybe yeah. ninety. <laughs> uh, well, they don't. Any, I don't think that's true. Is it? I mean, like Less Call so of Duty days. and. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I would argue the number of FPS is where you can hold more than two guns at a time dwarfs the number where you're limited to two. That's probably that's probably true. I actually like that limitation because it sure. fits what Halo it fits what Halo is. Uh like it narratively and functionally fits what Halo is and I don't think it's necessary in Titanfall. I I think I'm inclined to agree with you there that it's like why is it only two weapons here? How does it fit narratively? Not to turn this into the Halo cast, but I know I knew you're gonna say why, that. I, why would Master Chief be like, "I don't care what gun I carry"? He's a super soldier, wouldn't he? Be like, I, "It's very important to me what I'm armed with at any no, given he cares. time." I mean, of course he cares, but he can't carry a hundred guns because he's one person. He you could I mean? carry like, where are those, four, where are those? five. I mean, right. So like, if it's if it's an argument like why can't he carry a shotgun and a sniper rifle and a pistol? OK, fine. You know, like I sure. But like it made sense when the concept was introduced in 2001, sure. you know, uh, and and certainly Master Chief is ridiculous. But like I like it still narratively. He's supposedly just one guy. And I like the idea mm-hmm. that you have to improv and pick up weapons as you go. Okay. Um but Fair not enough. everybody does. And I do like Doom for being stupid and, and impossible and fun. Like, Doom mm-hmm. is awesome for that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. who gives a shit what reality is? You're fighting demons in hell. Let's go for it, you know? Doom well, Eternal is fantastic, by the way. That's a fantastic game. Uh, we we should talk about that at some point. Mm-hmm. But not now. <laughs> not now. Uh, Agreed. But that does bring me to a critique of Titanfall 2, which is... yeah. Not true of Doom Eternal, but I was actually going to compare more to Destiny 2 because I think where the Bungie team really excelled and where they seem to have put most of their focus is the belief that the main the main way you interact with this universe is killing things that you're looking at. Uh, right. So we should make the enemies like we have to lavish attention on the enemies, their animations, the way they react to getting shot, their AI strategy, the way they disperse themselves needs to feel different. Each enemy, their silhouettes need to be different enough that you go in and you go, Oh, those in the distance are Vex. I should pull out this weapon because they do this and they act like this in this situation. Their enemies are so specific and different, and it makes the game renewable because your gameplay loop is made of different different flavors. Right. Titanfall 2's enemies, pretty samey, I would oh, yeah, argue. They're exactly there's the a, same. 
there's a big difference between a foot soldier and a mech, a titan. Right. But that's right. it. All the titans, despite having different guns strapped to their hands, you basically engage with them in a similar way. And all the things on two legs, you engage in a similar way. Whether it's a robot or a human, it doesn't matter. They're all just gray, like figurines that you destroy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they they added a few wrinkles. Like I I think it's possible, if I remember correctly, to switch allegiances for the robots. I think that's possible. Sure. Um, and and you're, there's you, the medium sized mech you have to shoot in the belly, right. like limited shit like that. And they also have the wild fauna, right? Like the wild creatures mm-hmm. that you have to kill from time to time, which I found annoying more than like felt like, oh, what a cool enemy. Oh, I always I like, oh, completely ignored them and they you just know. end up dying of their own accord. Like I'm shooting at humans <laughs> and I go, oh, there's a hyena there. It wandered through my stream of bullets. That's fine. <laughs> yeah i mean well uh, you're wise then you know i like the zen approach that you they have never to took the me out. local fauna Did they ever take you out huh i died a few times to fauna to yeah fauna i did not yeah i mean i mean most of the although dying in titanfall 2 is also sort of inconsequential uh which is great uh, you know because like sure you know just pop me right back up yeah. I'll, I'll race down that pipe again and shoot that dude in the face but I totally agree. The guns and the enemies are basically the same, which is like a huge problem yes. in a first-person shooter. Uh, every every first-person shooter manages to find some variety. Even Call of Duty manages to find it by way of like scenarios and uh, different weapon types, and you know what I mean, like loadouts. Yeah, uh, and they don't. Ha- yeah, yeah. Like this like, guy even you're always just shooting. throws grenades. This guy just snipes, so it feels a little different, at least. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's got an RPG, what have you. They seem to think like, look, look, if we can create a satisfying enough game loop, it doesn't matter if you're killing the same guy over and over because it's fun to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Did you have other critiques? Um, I think those are my main two. One nice thing about Titanfall is for the few months that I played it, I didn't stay with it, so that may say something, and I'm not sure why. Uh, is it doesn't get super sweaty, which is a thing I hate about multiplayer based uh, what does that first mean? person shooters. Like they get, re- um, it just you get like these people who are just like they're really they're a bunch of tryhards and like you can't play the game and have any fun because the really awesome dude is here who's gonna murder everybody. Oh, you're saying the multiplayer environment didn't really escalate in that way. It didn't become impossible I to think, play the game. I think that's because it it's, didn't have as a critical mass of people interested in playing it. It went under the radar. I just feel that uh, it's nice to not be buried alive by people who are awesome at the game. Sure. And maybe if they made Titanfall 5, maybe by Titanfall 5 there'd be like, you know, Titan gods, and then it would be a terrible well, that's fucking That's what I'm saying is you're wishing for happened. the su- broader success, and I'm like, that's what happened. Go play Apex Legends. You'll get your fucking ass handed to you, dude. That's what happens. Yeah, right. Uh, unfortunately, right. there's too I, many goddamn people in the world, and when you make a game they all like, they get too good for me to play it because I have other things going on in my life. <laughs> I suspect, though, that like if the game remains mildly complicated, which Titanfall is, it's more complicated than a Call of Duty game. Yes that it will weed out people who are basically just like sniper tryhards. I mean, I, I guess I hope that that's people true. People are just like, um, pop and I, up, click, pop up, click. This is what I do. Right, I've crushed right. so many that's hours. Fucking I'm boring. good at it. Yeah. Yeah. And like that problem, it, 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 it doesn't exist as much in Destiny as it exists even in Call of Duty or uh, it still exists. But, and they have like certain events mm-hmm. to cater to those kind of maniacs in destiny. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what Titanfall's plan was in the long term to keep the sweat out of the game experience, but they did a pretty good job for the first few months that I was playing it. I didn't step in to review for this game and jump into some multiplayer and I probably should have. So I don't know if it became overrun with Titan Lords. Maybe <laughs> it did. I hope not. Hey, if you're a Titan Lord, let us know. Yeah, if you if you're the sweatiest titan, you know, <laughs> drop a couple of drop a couple of cluster bombs in my inbox, yeah. I guess. Remember them? Um, remember the Titans? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, get the, get the get. fuck out of here. <laughs> I god, I love well, you. Well, from inference, <laughs> I can tell that you played a fair amount of the multiplayer then. I have I barely dipped into the multiplayer. 
Um, I mean, I know that's not your jam. So did you play much of Titanfall 1? Did you ever play Titanfall 1? Mm, um, for like an hour at your house, I think. That's it. Okay. And was it, that was probably to prep for the escort mission, I assume? Yeah. Yes. The aforementioned yeah. escort mission where it, you right. wrote that one, right? I did. Yeah, that was the the econ- the Titan economy one. I, I that was one of my favorites. I think that we did in part mm-hmm. because there was that extra behind the scenes stuff that I don't even know if we released. That was just Greg playing Titanfall <laughs> when Greg like lost his mind. Were you there for that? Uh, when he was like playing Titanfall, he just could not believe it. Like what the fuck? Oh, I thought it was that was so good. 2016. It wasn't. No, oh, no. okay. It was Titanfall no, no, it, two it, it or was one. Not. Yes. It was Titanfall one. He just like couldn't believe Titanfall That's one. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, is well, and it is kind of a joyful game in a way. Well, you know, yeah, like the freedom of traversal. It's what it's all about. <laughs> right. Right. So and and I guess that's what it is. I guess that's I guess that's really the bottom line with Titanfall is that in general it's like, look, we're going to be very good at movement. And I, yeah. uh, our whole thing is built around that. And uh and so in a sense they are kind of an Ill, uh, uh, an ill-fated property because they gave great ideas that then got adopted and now we've moved on from it. So maybe it'll be like Dead Space where it's like it existed for a few mm-hmm. versions and that was it. But you need all the parts. Like I think it's important yeah. that it was a well-made game also because what's the uh, Just Cause? Just, I mean, it's right. third person, but it's an over-the-shoulder shooter that is notable because it's all about Tra- wacky traversal like you come in on a hang glider and then you grapple hook around shooting people but it's clunkily put together and doesn't like work right uh i think it's important that they also execute it at a high level like it's a really right. well put together game and that's why they i think are s- surging in the marketplace but uh i do think you're right that traversal it was revolutionary at the time just to think, how can we refresh in the FPS genre? Um, but traversal is such a basic, like no one can claim rights to video game traversal. Exactly. That it right. can easily be lifted and borrowed. Whereas something like super hot, which I described, you couldn't copy that without people going, that's super hot. Um, so it's, right. uh, it was destined to be just sort of mulched up and, and, woven into the grammar of FPS is going forward, which is why we thought it was important to cover and put a special spotlight on it. Totally. Cause it probably won't get the credit it deserves for the things it has done for the genre. If, if it had created a more memorable world or protagonist, mm-hmm. there's a chance there to been a I Titan, mean, like the Titanfall would be a permanent franchise. Jesus Christ, right? Jack Cooper. Like it's as basic yeah, as it can boring. be. Yeah. Right. Even his lines, even when you have to select like what line he says and then he says it, you're like, ugh. Like, I, like I'm just like, this guy is fine. Oh, and they're all He's just the so same. fine. They move the plot forward right. the same amount and they are just different riffs of the same stupid quip. Like, BT's dialogue's right. pretty decent, but with Jack, it'll be choosing between like, I think we better get out of here or she looks angry. We better go. And you're like, who gives a shit? Say whatever, dude. You sure about that BT or I trust you BT either way. He's going to say the same fucking thing. Right. Uh. Uh, Right. And he has no, like he's not master chief. He's not even like an anonymous protagonist. He's not a legendary. Definitely. Yeah. No. But if he had been, uh, or again, if the Titanfall world was like mildly more compelling, I could see there being there aren't even aliens. I mean, you only fight humans and robots. That's interesting. That, that'd be an int- very interesting wrinkle for Titanfall yeah. if they they were like here, you know, version three aliens, uh, aliens, yeah. and it's totally different. Like, oh fuck, okay. Uh, but I've said what I feel like I needed to say about this. Did you have more you wanted to say, or should we pass the final checkpoint? I thought I had one more thing. It was about the escort mission the uh titanfall economy well no you you covered the the points from that escort yeah. mission but i was just tr- right i guess i'm just remembering wasn't it evolution that he anyway this is boring no it, no it was <laughs> i hate I'm this bored. <laughs> i'm bored of me <laughs> no no it, it was definitely titanfall okay. uh but evolution's another one that was very overwhelming yeah. 
uh, and around the same time. And I think it was Evolve is actually the mm. name of that game. Anyway, who cares? That one's in the dustbin of history. Yep. But we're fighting tall about Titanfall. And let's pass that <laughs> final checkpoint. You really did get this me with that one. Peck, peck <laughs> joint? No, that's nothing. See, it seems like I'm yeah. clever, but really all I am is obsessed with switching the first two letters of every pair of words I ever hear. And some of them happen to be puns just by chance. You're so excellent at it, Then I, then it, I say them out loud. <laughs> it just... <laughs> It is a little weird, right, that like the other faction you're fighting against is basically a Mad Max outfit, but with Titans like that are clearly expensive. I don't understand. Like, how the fuck are they getting those Titans? How in the world they presented there's functioning bands of mercenaries and bounty that hunters? That makes no sense. The world doesn't yeah. seem to allow for that. How would they exist? Yeah. If... If the if the if the Titan is a cognitive being that is programmed to only allow certain people with permission mm. to pilot it, how in God's name there, is there a Mad Max band of Titan random pirates. bandits? Yeah. yeah, how is that possible? Yeah, uh, it's true. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, sorry, Titanfall. That's fine. Uh, keep or delete. That's where That's we are. The name of the thing. We're at that. We're at the precipice. You, sir. Oh. Do you mind answering I first? I actually remember the whole time I was stalling, all I was going to say is I do wish there was a grappling hook. That's all. <laughs> oh. I think as the pilot, if yeah. you could have grappled directly across a space to a flat surface across from you and zip to the opposite wall, that would have been beneficial. That feels like it That's fits all I in this world, to too. And now we're done. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Stop the press. Keep it delete, sir. Oh, uh, I'll delete it, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, deleting it. Not even even with its traversal and its uh high, its its elevated spirit. Well, no good. Uh, huh? We talked about. I think it it ranked the honor, honestly, frankly, the like unfathomable privilege of having us even shine our light of insight upon it. <laughs> and that's I, the ego of that. I really like that. That's the award. <laughs> is that. Everyone was like, I love... We care. Everyone was like, I yeah. love the plot. And we're like, we're going to give you 45 solid minutes, if you don't count tangents, talking about the mechanics. You're welcome. <laughs> but, <laughs> delete. My friend, you are... <laughs> are... You are a marauding goblin in a titan right, right now. Goblin. The, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, the enemies aren't distinct enough. The It didn't become transcendent. Yeah. What we're choosing to highlight is a very, very important element but it's not like a game where every element hit for me uh yeah see now now i'm be now i'm curious if you'd ever keep a game like Fortnite. uh but we'll get to that some other time i imagine i'm gonna delete it too but but i have to tell you i really thought about keeping it mm -hmm. uh but i'm gonna delete it because ultimately i didn't stick around with the multiplayer and i think that matters and I have played it through twice in the campaign. And the second time, I wasn't even paying attention to it. Sure. Uh, and, and not because I w didn't want to, because it was uh, actually, it felt a little dated, honestly. Right. Um, so it can't be that great a game if in t like four years or whatever, it's gotten dated already. Sorry, Titanfall 2. Yep. We do love you. Great game. Uh, we do, do love you. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Did you happen to have that spreadsheet of all our keeps and deletes? Aren't we oh, supposed I to do have that? it. Uh, I, I, no, I, it's been sent to me, but I don't have it for right this moment because I forgot so to bring it up. So are we going to make Dave sit through it next episode? I mean, Dave's done a lot to me, so yeah, okay. I don't mind making him all pay. Right. Well, we should do Not that because I... It's got to be off my plate. I can't stay up all night thinking about this <laughs> spreadsheet. This fan. Is it haunting you? There's a small yeah. beans fan out there languishing with lack of closure. It has to. Yeah. yeah. Well, we did get it. I, I want to be okay. clear. Well, it, we'll bring that it, up. I did get next it. Next episode. Yeah. Yes. Um, and yeah. Fair, well, farewell, friends. I, I hope that, uh, you know, the Titan of Fortune falls into your life very soon. If it has already, consider spending some of that fortune over at patreon.com slash small beans. Your support yes. helps us. Whatever this just was. <laughs> helps us <laughs> furiously game shine our spotlight of insight. I don't know. Uh, also helps uh, us make great video series and sketches. and For sure. And continue to this. live.
Yeah, yeah, mostly this. Yeah. And uh, if you if you are in a place right now where you're a little cash strapped, but you'd still love to support the beans in some other mm. way, mm. you can do that by uh, by giving us a review on iTunes. It does expose new listeners to our podcasts, mm-hmm. and we would greatly appreciate that. That's no longer true. Actually, they updated it. We can we o- oh. we only take cash now. Just send us cash. <laughs> And I don't mean on Patreon. Yes. No, just send yeah. me cash. Uh, you'll My figure it out. If you really want, if, open. Yeah, if you love me enough, you'll mm-hmm. figure out how to get me cash. You'll figure it out. <laughs> hey. See you next yeah, time. Yeah, to support Small Beans, <laughs> find us in real life. That's that's what we want. Seriously, though, give Boy, us some money. Uh, and bye. <laughs> bye. Work complete. This has been a Small Beans endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you!